the sheep go up to one stop duck. Ho, ho, uh-oh, the sheep are stuck. The cows go up to unstuck duck. Ho, ho, uh-oh, ho, 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 the cows are stuck. The pigs go up to unstuck duck. Ho, ho, uh-oh, the pigs are stuck. They all go up to unstuck duck. Ho, ho, uh-oh, everyone is stuck. <clears throat> well, it's Santa's turn to unstuck duck. Ho, ho, oh no, what happened? Ho, 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 ho. don't be silly, Santa would never get stuck. Kabloom, down we all go, the chim down the chimney we all go. Ho, ho, ho. Now all around the tree, in the light's warm glow, all their creatures are stirring. Repeat it after me. Ho, ho, ho. Oh, oh, oh. Now that's one of my favorite books for the little kids there. That's called Click Clack Ho 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 by Doreen Cronin and Betsy Lou. So now I think let's take one more trip and then we'll start the party. How many of you would like to take a visit to the North Pole? Oh yes, the North Pole is wonderful. And this book written about 30, 35 years ago now, allowed so many people to take that magical trip. It's one of my favorites of all time. Hello. This book is called The Polar Express. It was written and the beautiful, beautiful pictures were drawn by Chris Van Allsburg. Let's head to the North Pole, shall we? <clears throat> On Christmas Eve many years ago, the boy lay quietly in his bed. He breathed slowly and silently. He was listening for a sound, a sound a friend had told him he would never hear, the ringing bells of Santa's sleigh. Well, there is no Santa, the friend had insisted, but the boy knew his friend was wrong. Now, late that night, he did hear sounds, though not of ringing bells. From outside came the sounds of hissing steam and squeaking metal. <clears throat> he looked through the window, his bedroom window, and he saw a train standing perfectly still in front of his house. It was wrapped in an apron of steam and snowflakes fell lightly around it. A conductor stood at the open door of one of the cars. He took a large pocket watch from his vest and then he looked up at the boy's window. The boy put on his slippers and robe, and he tiptoed down the stairs and out the door. <clears throat> oh, boy! The conductor cried out, and the boy ran up to him. Well, the conductor said, are you coming? Where, the boy asked. Why, to the North Pole, of course, said the conductor. This is the Polar Express. And the boy took the conductor's outstretched hand, and he was pulled aboard. Now the train was filled with other children, all in their pajamas and nightgowns. They sang Christmas carols and ate candies with nougat centers <coughs> as white as snow. Mm. The children drank hot cocoa as thick and rich as melted chocolate bars. Now outside, the lights of towns and villages flickered in the distance as the Polar Express raced northward. And soon, there were no more lights to be seen. The Polar Express traveled through cold, dark forests where lean wolves roamed and white-tailed rabbits hid from the train as it thundered through the quiet wilderness. <clears throat> now, it climbed mountains so high it seemed as if it would scrape the moon, but the Polar Express never slowed down. Faster and faster it ran along, rolling over peaks and through valleys like a car on a roller coaster. Now soon, those mountains turned to hills, <clears throat> and the hills to snow-covered plains. They crossed a barren desert of ice, the great polar ice cap, and lights appeared in the distance. Now they looked like the lights of a strange ocean liner sailing on the frozen sea. Well there, said the conductor, is the North Pole. <laughs> the North Pole. <clears throat> It is a huge city, 
standing at the top of the world, filled with factories where every Christmas toy is made. Now, at first, the children saw no elves. <clears throat> well, the gathering at the center of the city, the conductor had told them. That is where Santa will give the first gift of Christmas. <gasps> Who receives the first gift, the children all asked. The conductor answered, well, he will choose one of you. <laughs> Look, shouted one of the children, the elves! And outside, they saw hundreds of elves. As the train grew closer to the center of the North Pole, it, it slowed to a crawl. So crowded were the streets with my helpers. And when the Polar Express could go no farther, it stopped. And the conductor let the children out. <clears throat> now they passed through the crowd at the edge of a large open circle. And in front of them stood my sleigh. <laughs> the reindeer were excited. They, they pranced and paced ringing the silver sleigh bells that hung from their harnesses. Oh, it is a magical sound. It's like nothing you've ever heard. So across from the circle, the elves moved apart, and I appeared, and the elves cheered wildly. So I marched over to the children, and I pointed to the boy, and said, let's have this fellow here. I jumped into my sleigh, and the conductor handed the boy up, and he sat on my knee and asked, I asked him, and what would you like for Christmas? The boy knew that he could have any gift he could imagine, but the thing he wanted most wasn't inside my giant bag. What he wanted more than anything was 